an issue. In an ideal world, we would see the implementation and the enforcement of international laws and resolutions. One of the biggest strengths of the United States is that we regard our country as a nation of laws. There are laws that are made, and there are laws that are enforced, and they apply to everyone. Unfortunately, when it comes to U.S. policy in the Middle East, the U.S. does all that it can to prevent the implementation of international laws and conventions. Palestinians, through Oslo and other uh, negotiating uh, processes, accepted the absurd notion that to obtain the legitimate rights that are guaranteed by God and guaranteed by international laws, that we must sit with our occupiers and oppressors, with thieves and murderers, and come to an agreement with them. Now imagine if this was applied to U.S. law here in the United States. Why the hell do we need to have a court system? You go in and you just have someone who's there and you say, okay, your um, home was stolen or your car was stolen, why don't you sit together with the thief and see if you could work it out with them? Were you raped? Hey, no problem. Sit down with your rapist and see if you could come to some kind of accommodation. Is that the kind of system that we want to enforce internationally? Now, another uh, example of how absurd this, this whole process is. The U.S. government, as uh, um, Brother Osem had, had mentioned with what was going on with this negotiation about a temporary, limited freeze on Israeli settlements. The U.S. government, our government, with our taxes, gives Israel billions of dollars in aid. They give Israel the best weaponry in the United States. They provide them with diplomatic cover before every international body, such as the United Nations. Despite all of this, despite everything we provide them, despite the fact that they exist and survive based on our generosity here from the U.S. government, we as a government could not get the Israeli government to temporarily, for 90 days, stop the illegal construction in some areas of the occupied territories of Jewish-only settlements that are illegal under international law. So the United States, which is the patron and the, the subsidizer of Israel, was not able to get a very minor um, item out of the Israeli government, and yet the Palestinians are ex expected to go forward and to gain all of their legitimate rights which are guaranteed under international law. How absurd is that? How are we going to be able to move forward to obtaining some kind of just and lasting settlement? Because of time limitation, I'm going to just go over some of the points but not go into them in great detail. I believe that in general there are five principles that I'll outline. Number one, whether we like it or not, our government will continue to play an important role in determining a solution to the conflict. We must make it clear, however, that the one item we must not hesitate to always express is that the U.S. government, our government, sadly and unfortunately, is not an honest and even-handed broker and cannot be allowed to portray itself as such so long as it does not adopt fair and just policies. That's absolute. You know, sometimes we look at things that the U.S. government does and we we say, oh wow, you know, this is something that's very positive. And one thing that Brother Osama had mentioned was, for example, when George Mitchell was appointed uh, to be the head for Obama just a couple days after the, the inauguration. And many people in the community said, oh, you know, look, this guy is from Middle Eastern descent, um, you know, George Mitchell, he's going to be fair and, and reasonable and whatever else. Um, the the pro-Israeli community immediately began to slam him, although if you check his record in Congress, he had a 100% pro-Israel voting record. Okay? Yet, we were trying to hold on to something very simple when we should have said, you know what, we're really skeptical of this guy because look at his record, he's 100% pro-Israel. Um, in his voting record before, he might be good, but we're going to judge him on what he's able to do and not on who he is or what he says. The second item is we must stress the importance and the application 
of international laws and conventions as the primary means to bring an end to the decades-long occupation and to the dispossession of the Palestinian people. It is only by the application of laws and conventions that we will truly be able to have a standard where we could say this is a standard that applies to everyone and we want this a standard to be applied to this group of individuals as well. We are not looking for something unique. We are not looking for something special. We're looking for the application of human rights which should apply equally to all people without exception. The third item which is important is we must be aware of the attempts by the United States government and the Israeli government to select or to support or to encourage or to bankroll acceptable negotiating partner, partners to represent the Palestinian and Muslim perspectives on this issue. We as a Muslim community must choose our own leaders. We also need to make sure that the leadership which is negotiating on this conflict, regardless of where that leadership is or what country they're coming from, that to ensure that that leadership is not being blackmailed or being coerced or being pressured in some way to give up on the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people, we need to make sure that that does not happen by demanding that any future agreement will not be binding unless it's approved in a referendum that is submitted to the entire Palestinian community, both in occupied Palestine and in the diaspora. The fourth item, I'm going to finish on time, unlike Brother Osama. <laughs> the fourth item is we must continue to speak out in the media to our government officials, to our neighbors, in schools, to newspapers. We must continue to talk to religious groups, Christian, Jewish, um, other religious groups. We must continue to educate. This is a battle which is a battle for people's minds. If people were aware of the kind of things that are going on and what our government politicians are doing, many of them would be appalled. Unfortunately, many of them do not really understand what is going on with regards to foreign policy. Many people here in this country are concerned by what goes on within the borders of the United States, and they're pretty much oblivious to much of what's going on outside. It is our obligation to continue to inform them and to get them to act. And there are many of them who are doing much more work than we are as a Muslim community and Palestinian community. And we need to really do our job and to do it right and not complain and not whine about the power of the other side or that, you know, there's, uh, we just can't do anything or we make excuses for ourselves. There's absolutely no reason to make an excuse. We have the, the, um, the manpower, the woman power. We have the financial ability to do what, it needs, what needs to be done to make our message one that's out there and one that is convincing and that's something that we need to make sure that we get involved in um, some more. The final item, and I'll do this all within my time, is we have to continue to work with some of these other groups, many of which are, as I indicated, quite active, especially in the boycott, divestment and sanctions. Now, you would think that, you know, this is very difficult and this is not going to really have an effect and, you know, we're, you, know there, you sometimes see these emails that are going on back and forth and, and so forth. Um, we need to really be selective and we really need to choose what we are going to do and how we're going to choose a particular product and so forth. We don't have to choose everything. We don't have the, the, the uh, means to choose everything. But there are groups that are doing a very, very effective job. And in a recent article, in one of the Israeli newspapers, either Haaretz or the Jerusalem Post, they interviewed Ehud Barak, and he was talking about the importance, this is when he met here in Washington, and uh, he was talking about you know, the importance of a settlement, not because they love us, but because they want to preserve themselves. Okay, let's be clear about that. But one of the things that he said was he's concerned because what he's calling the delegitimization campaign, which is really the boycott, divestment, and sanctions, is, in his view, more dangerous than even Hezbollah.
Okay, so that tells you how important they consider that.